Popov. She's vice president uh, of Makan Tel Aviv uh, Agency uh, and yes. a project that definitely will win. And you have only 23 steps to do. If you do the right steps, as Mikhail uh, did, then for sure you will win. Well, magic. So you have a kind of uh, magical uh, senses or something. What kind of projects you talk about and what is this special technology? Um, so hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. My name is uh, Mikhail, as they said, and I live in Tel Aviv. Uh, the project that I will be presenting today, you're talking about and asking, of course, uh, for your questions, uh, is Disables, the project that we did for IKEA, Tel Aviv, Israel, um, went globally and won lots of prizes in the Cannes uh, Advertising uh, Festival. But mostly it was a very, very difficult project to make. And uh, I will show you in a, uh, it's not a classic presentation. It's more of a video presentation. And then of course you can ask me whatever you want. But to take you through the journey of doing such a magical project uh, and the steps and uh, not giving up. And, and let's see the video and then we'll, the, the presentation video and we'll go on from there. Right. One second, I'll share it. So um, I'll take you through one more thing, which is the case study of the project. So whoever doesn't know it, will see what it means. And then I'll walk you through uh, what we did exactly uh, hand by hand. Um, one second. Uh, me. Michael, uh, can yes. I ask you to move camera a little bit so we don't see your beautiful eyes uh, at, at this point? Can you just, you know, yeah, better, just much, much better. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we want Not to... that beautiful after a day of work, but ah, yes. Ah, okay, well, well, anyway, they are, they are. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, the 
I'm working from home today. I don't know what about you, but oh uh, yes, we are working from home uh, almost every day. So know, today we Israel, are lucky. At least we, with colleagues here in the studio, we can meet finally. Uh. All the rest <laughs> of our viewers actually are online, so they know your reality very well. <laughs> So please, uh, you are sharing a screen, huh? Yes, yes. One second, I'm uh -huh. share now. Okay. Yes, we see. Enjoy. Yes. Hi, I'm Eldo, 32 years old. Although I have cerebral palsy, I do everything I can to conduct myself like everyone else. But in my own home, of all places, I'm surrounded with furniture crying out cripple. I'd like to sit on a regular sofa without being afraid I won't be able to get up, to open a regular closet, or even to turn on a regular lamp. One in every ten people in Israel is a disabled person. The IKEA design vision gave birth to the Disables Project. Smart hacks making IKEA's best-selling items accessible. The project was created in collaboration with two NGOs, Milbat and Access Israel, and started off in the IKEA store with a hackathon of product engineers and disabled people that enabled better understanding of their needs. In the end of the developing process, 13 new products were born, each solving a different accessibility issue, such as sofa elevating legs for easier ascending, lamp button enlargement, special handles for packs closets, and more. The new products are presented in the world's first accessible living spaces in the IKEA stores. The new models are available for download from the project's website, disables.com, and 3D printing anywhere in the world. So that Eldar, Dina, Pavel, Ingbao, Moshe, Daniel, and Liel can also feel comfortable in their own homes like everybody else. Now they should come up with products that assemble themselves. Really, I mean, so many people are touched. Uh, thank you very much. So what you did even, in even after, Israel. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wow. Sorry. No, no, we hear you very well. And uh, honestly, what, what you did in Israel, we should just copy paste uh, because IKEA is everywhere. Huh? Besides, yeah. of course, Estonia, but they will build it up in next year. So, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you did the big it's thing. Sad. But can, can we say that this works only with the big companies, more or less, that you would never approach? a local designer you know who is a fancy and he's a local so you should support him so but you know the big superpowers because the uh, IKEA's budget most probably is uh, like 10 times bigger than Latvia's Can budget. Can I tell you a small secret? Mm -hmm. um, the whole project everything everything top to bottom uh, cost IKEA $80,000 US. But for uh, them uh, it's nothing. Yeah? Yeah, it's nothing, um, but because we did it with an NGO and we did an open code, um, so it's not manufacturing uh, themselves. I mean, you, you just three, you just download a PDF file and you go and print it in a 3D printer, which are becoming more and more uh, yeah. uh, common in, in most universities and in cities. Um, and I understand your question. It is. I work in advertising, so I do work with the big companies. Um, so it's easier for them to take our ideas and, and to bring them to life with us. Um, I do think small manufacturers can do things like that, but in very small scales. Uh, it wouldn't have, if it wasn't IKEA, it wouldn't have won such uh, um, global recognition and not just in prizes even uh with the influence around the influencers around the world or the uh press that we got when the project was released um yeah i deal with big businesses <laughs> uh, unfortunately or happily i don't know i'm happy for it because that's what i do for a living but um yeah but um, um, now tell us, uh, so it's okay for you if someone from Latvia now access this uh, website, you will probably provide us, and makes this kind of um, 3D printing uh, what file and goes to this shop where there is a 3D printer, of course, over the corner in Latvia, and, and you print it out and you can attach to just a simple... Any, yeah, okay, yeah, with uh, no yeah. charge. So it's a kind of a Christmas gift from the Holy Land. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas gift from the Holy Land, that's well, funny. Yeah. 
Oh, Hanukkah gift. We have oh, yeah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah gift. Week, yeah. Oh, even better, even better. It's closer, <laughs> right? Hanukkah is you next know, week, isn't it? Christmas is better. My parents okay. were born in Riga, so... Uh, okay. I'm, my yeah, god my so all the best to your parents uh, uh, oh mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, great uh yeah but that was the basic idea that we wanted it not to be for sale we wanted to be uh accessible anywhere everywhere it's an open code anyone can download it anyone can print it you can adjust the sizes to bigger furniture um i think when we started the project we realized that not only in Israel, all of the, all over the world, there is about 10% of the population that uh, suffers from disabilities. Yes. Plus, you have third age. You have uh, elderly that need help with all kinds of things inside their home. And if we do it open source, it won't be just the for, just the sales. You can do it anywhere in the world and without any charge. Yeah. But uh, this could be also multiplied to another companies even talking the same language but even to i don't know food suppliers to to the, the packaging sometimes also makes uh, people angry that one cannot open if there is a certain disability or or something like this i'm i'm thinking about the, the whole concept you developed actually goes not only to ikea or or uh, you know furniture yeah basically if if uh, any other company or any other uh, industry can actually design their own uh it's like um you do have to design the basic lineup of the product itself and then uh do the the the, the pdfs that are you have to scan them in order to put them inside the machine of uh, the 3d that the printing will turn out the way you want but yes you can do it in any other product uh, i think that's something which is uh, I'm proud to live in a world where I can I can finally do things like that. I mean, as technology progresses, we can do more and more things that can help people without lots and lots of expenses and uh, years of design and manufacturing. But small things. But but this um, small trick that you developed idea, which was refused by IKEA at the very first, so not in the right time. Okay. So what? Oh, even many times. So what were the excuses actually? So uh, uh, what exactly wow. timing was wrong? It it started with the fact that the first NGO that we partnered with had legal issues with them. They wouldn't sign all kinds of legal uh, things. And then it wasn't in their business focus. It was a year with all kinds of changes. They opened up a kitchen store. They opened it. And you know, they have their own uh, um, yearly plans for advertising and uh, marketing. And they say it's nice. It's very, it sounds amazing, but we don't have the money or the skills or the human resources to do it. And I think because we believed in it so much and Eldal, the copywriter that uh, uh, works with us in McCann, he, we struggled so hard to get the project out and we didn't give up. And we just did almost everything alone. And then we just showed them how the magic can happen. We built a room inside the office. We brought IKEA furniture inside the office and we made like a small showroom to show them uh, the power of the uh, accessible room and and then they said okay we're with you and then everything went on track even we even did the we had a press conference and because we didn't want them to give up we sent our people to uh, wrap the presents so the you know the marketing team won't have to do everything and themselves so we did it uh, it was a strong team that was very, very devoted, and we didn't give up. It took us two and a half years to bring wow. out the project. Okay, what an attitude! Yeah. Thank you, really. I mean, you <laughs> Israelis, you, you showed us a, a, such an <laughs> inspiring example, really. But from the point of view of uh, not copywriter, but copyrights as a legal status of designers' work, so you involved a real IKEA designers who are used to be fancy schmancy people who sell their design products as a drawings to you know ikea ikea factories and then uh 
how do you persuade them that their job is a nice social responsibility, what, gift? How, how do you, you know, involve okay. them that they I'll should explain. provide it uh, as a free um, of charge? Luckily for us, we didn't work with the Swedish designers. Okay. We worked with the Israeli designers. They do a lot of styling and designing in store. And they helped us with uh, product designers of the NGO to fit the product uh, the IKEA way. Of, I mean, like the colors, the structures, um, which is not, it's not like they created from nothing. They created with disabled people and with a product designer. It's not like um, the Mona Lisa, okay? Yeah. They did something that was specifically made for disabled people. We brought the disabled people, a uh, group of disabled people with all kinds of disabilities to IKEA stores together with them to show them how their furniture are not suitable for them and with a small thing that they can create, it can be a game changer. Yeah. Um, and Dal couldn't get up from a couch. That was the start of the, the project. He's trying to get up and the couch is too, is too low. Yeah. And so why don't just pull up the legs? I mean, it's, yeah. it's simple. Um, so it's not like inventing or reinventing design. It's hacking and doing small things uh, to improve it. But um, now, can they understand the power of all this concept? Do they use it for, let's say, a nice Christmas story before uh, Christmas, the IKEA promotion thing or, or something? Can they use it? Because you offered them as a, as a Macan, as an as a, uh, advertisement agency's professional. So they can really take it and, and do a super trooper popular uh, advertisement. Like, you know, Coca-Cola yeah. car drives around the United mm -hmm. States. It's red. It's Coca-Cola color. Yeah. No. Um, yes, they can. Um, we're still trying to get the Swedish side, the uh, global IKEA, to take it and go globally and produce these products by themselves. It's a hard ride, especially with COVID that stopped everything and okay. the whole world went crazy. Um, and we're still doing uh, and trying to continue to project. We do have 13 new add-ons, which are not on the website yet. Uh -huh. um, we're waiting for clearances um, for kids and we were in contact with a school of, uh, of children with disabilities and we wanted to make a line for kids and they're very proud of it now in the project. It's presented in the uh, IKEA Museum in Helmut, Sweden and we got a lot, a lot of calls and emails from IKEAs all over the world. Uh, locally wanting to implant this uh, in their uh, marketing plans. Um, yeah, and there are partners. I mean, it's not like me. Uh, McCann does things in advertising which are for the clients. Yeah. Of course, for us as well. I mean, we do business, but yeah. it makes us proud if a client of us wants to continue and take it from here uh, globally. Um, the clients get the things that we do, it's, they own it. I mean, McKen doesn't own uh, the advertising itself. But That's I the, understand uh, you didn't do uh, with a purpose to get the new client like IKEA. You did no, it no, with no, a it's, social it's reason. our client. Right. Uh, but McKen uh, um, is... IKEA has been in McKen for eight years. I mean, Okay. It's not... And you never lost them at point. I mean, uh, no. the, it was a tricky moment and they, they would say, Hey, listen, what are you doing now? It's against our policy. It's against our traditions. No, 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 stop it, stop it. And you were still pushing them, even by uh, this chance to lose a good client. Uh, yes. Um, that's a perception uh, that leads us. We do, we make partnerships with our clients. Uh, and when you have a strong partnership, only if you have a strong partnership, you can leap and do things like that. Yes. Um, when I can call the CEO of IKEA Israel and tell him, listen, we have an amazing idea. Let's go together and, and manage the risks. Only if you have a strong partnership, you can do things like that. Right. Uh, I have clients which have uh, like the linkage is, is good and the business is good, but the, it's not a partnership. And with IKEA, we have a team there of three people, the CEO, the CMO, and, and the uh, advertising manager. And we are three, me, Sigal, the creative director, and my, my VP, 
my CEO, uh, Amit. We are practically almost friends. I mean, we've been working together for six years. We do a lot of great things in, in local advertising, which is not social, but uh, and we're with them and we're inside their business and their partners. That's I think that, that with people, it's always about partnership and relationship. Of course. Can I ask you a private question? If you have a private Please. story in your uh, family, why you wanted to uh, talk about this? Uh, if anyone from your family is uh, disabled, uh, or, or w why no. it was Our so needed for you to do it? Uh, no, no one in my family. Um, Eldar, the copyright that works with me, is a very, very... Um, funny and interesting guy and I think that when he came up with the idea and he fought for it and it was amazing it's amazing to see as, as a human being just to see how amazing things can happen from yeah. diversity inside the office and from I would have never come up with an idea like that I mean yeah. I have no 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 disability or as my mother says foot 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 but uh, <laughs> Um, and then the excitement was so, so, it was, we got so many comments from people all over the world and in Israel that suffer from disabilities about the emotional side of the project that uh, it's, it's, you can't, you, as a human being, you can just not, you have to talk about it, you have to do it, you have to continue struggling for the, for people with disabilities, for, for all kinds of uh, yeah. populations. Um, but this project was so, we worked so hard on it and it became a part of us. And I'm happy to talk about it in any platform, especially it's my, it's my hometown. Yeah, like you've I, been born even in Latvia, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. I, my parents came to Israel in, in 1980, uh -huh. it was the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at that time. And it, I was yeah. born here in 81. Okay. Um, yeah, and now they were just there for two months because yeah. here it's hot during the summer, so they yeah. would, they moved back for two months. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, and it's a beautiful city. Oh, of course, I've been it is. there a few times. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Come again, yeah. come again, and come <laughs> with will. your ideas. And can I suggest you, <laughs> if these Swedes are too lazy to do these printouts and to implement it uh, in a real IKEA, not only in museum in uh, yeah. Stockholm, the IKEA museum, just to show how good they are. You know, we have a plenty of 3D printers here in Latvia. We can print it. We can, you know, scale it uh, to a level. Let's I mean, go. we could be, you know, part of of, of this at least. <laughs> I know that the social business in Latvia uh, should definitely consider why not to put these ideas together and, 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 and do it. I mean, 3D printer and some skilled uh, yeah, workers, of course. It. Yeah. The website is uh, open and I'm open and I have an email. And, well, uh, it's open code uh, idea. Thank you yeah. very, very much. Uh, Thank um, you. And, and all the best to your parents, of course. And Thank uh, you. <laughs> enjoy your... So should I say your... Um, hmm, it's not your your place of birth, but it's place of birth of your, of your family. So one day, yeah. uh, why not to do these, uh, let's call them uh, brave and crazy uh, things uh, uh, in Latvia. So please welcome. Great. <laughs> if you have next ideas, <laughs> develop them here, uh, not only no in Israel. <laughs> let's go global. Yeah, let's go global. Exactly. Yeah. Over just, uh, you know, one sea. You fly over uh, Mediterranean yeah. and you're almost in Latvia. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thank Goodbye. you.